bag mm -hmm. I'm gonna start you know this is technically my breakfast because I didn't eat breakfast I had to get out you know and drive down the highway so mm -hmm. you know sometimes ciders are, should be my first one then I'll move into something a little heavier like yeah that. yeah, wait, Guinness, I, yeah what's I don't the Guinness why. looking one that's normally hey I just saw nitro and I got excited so I, well, I, like, I like I like that I'm, I'll take that yeah, I'll ask some questions let's go <laughs> like you're the guy <laughs> yeah, I'll come up with something I don't even know what PDL stands for and when I'm hosting the show. Here. There you go. It's not good. Premier Development League. Uh, yeah, so we're here at Parallel 49 Kitchen Bar. Having a few pints. Ryan, Greg, our women's coach, behind the screen right now. Uh, good man. And uh, some of you guys might know this guy, Jay Demerit, um, who was also on our board of advisors, helping us guide this pirate ship through the wavy waters of Canadian soccer. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're gonna have a few pints and we're gonna talk about what, why we, why we set sail. Why we set sail with no particular end point in Canadian soccer. So the starting point is uh, that we purchased a franchise. Uh, now we have a women's team in the Premier Development League for a men, PDL. Uh, Jay also played in that league, and then we also have a, a women's team now in the WPSL, Women's Premier Development League. Very similar. The idea is to um, you know, provide our young Canadian kids who have no 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 place to grow in the game, no place to to uh, you know go fail, um, an opportunity to learn to be a professional, to be uh, demanded of, uh, to strive for, to go play. Um, you know, in a real stadium with fans who've uh, put some hard-earned dollars down to come see them perform or not perform um, to test ourselves and uh, yeah, you know, so so what we're doing right now is we're, we're trying to build uh, teams uh, off the field and on the field and, um, and create an environment that um, helps our national pool. I like it, I like it. So now Touched on kind of the foundation, the starting point where we're at. It's uh, first couple weeks of March here. The season's right around the corner. What's on the agenda? I mean, obviously for Friday, it's drinking some brews in the afternoon, but what's on the agenda for the next few weeks to get things where they need to be for the start of the season? Yeah, well, Whistler I mean, with his wife. yeah, well, I'm, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta take the sweetie pie away for a couple days to make sure I, I get to be able to coach for the whole season. Um, no, it's a sprint, man. Everything in this uh, in this world is a sprint. It's a, it's a fully volunteer operated uh, operation. Um, TSS is a, a, is an academy that coaches young kids, gives you know gives them a, a place to look. Uh, we'll be coaching all our youth teams all the way through, but right now it's. Um, you know, trying to engage uh, the community, um, register all our players, sign them all. Uh, it was about a month ago last year that we actually came into existence. So we're way ahead of the game because last year uh, we weren't just sprinting; we were we were full on grinding. This is just exist. Uh, so this year, a lot, lot, lot more, uh, a lot cleaner. We're, we're certainly helping the women's team. Uh, get off the ground, but you know May 14th, uh, 2018 is uh, start date for the uh, for the men's team. We play in Lane United from uh, Oregon. I mean, when it when it comes to to that point, when it comes to the home opener, uh, we want to have the atmosphere absolutely rocking at Swan Garden. And, and as a fan, and as a Vancouverite, I mean, growing up, the history in that stadium, it's a great place to watch the game. Um, as a player, Jay, I mean, how crucial is it? To have that kind of sweet home, to have that good atmosphere. Oh, and, and, I mean, what I think, and again, going kind of back to what Will said at the foundation of it all, I think, you know, PDL provides a, another platform for young Canadians to, to find their place in the game. And I think, um, you know, again, I, I was I was a perfect example of that. I come from a PDL background, right? So, you know, when I was in Chicago as an undrafted, uh, 
into the MLS player. I, I played for the Chicago Fire Reserves, no affiliation to the club themselves, but uh, it was uh, something that I, I went through. But to go to your actual question, what does it feel like to walk out in front of people? What does it mean to like what, have your stadium? It, by no means you feel like you're an MLS player, but you don't feel like you're a college guy either. You know, and, and, and I think uh, PDL provides that platform where it starts to bridge that gap between where you're trying to go as a player and where you actually are. And I was seven years old. Nice. And I, and I went to the 1979, uh, uh, you know, NASL was really it was, it was a big. It's a big part of why we believe that we can create something uh, that that makes a difference for Canadian players. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But it's really, you know, that empire, uh, that spirit of the the old NASL, uh, the idea that Canadian players were had to play, yeah. uh, had to have a place to play, is exactly why um, that's a part of it. That's a part of the, the, the block, the foundational block, why we think uh, the Rovers is an important aspect of uh, producing players. I think players feel that. I think players love being a part of those environments because it does feel like a next step. And that's that's truly what I think you know the TSS Rovers provide. And, um, and the players should be excited about that because they've never had that before. And, and, and that is good for, for Canadian soccer. It's good for soccer in general because then that starts to unearth more of these talents that will eventually help their national team, which again brings back the whole reason of why they're doing this. Yeah. One of the major things that we're trying to accomplish is to create a culture um, that people understand a partner is the supporter that's in the stands. And and you know, our club might be a small uh, grassroots club that plays in the PDL, but it's a place, and we talk about this all the time, Jay and I, and, and it was a really, we are aligned heavily on the idea that um, you know, fans as a commodity is, is really something we're trying to avoid. Um, fans as partners, and they have a voice in, in, in the direction of the club and where it wants to go and, um, and really guide our belief and that they make a difference. And for me, uh, you know, Jay, Jay could probably uh, attest to this, but when you leave a club, the fans never leave. You're gone, but it's still there. Um, that's that's kind of missed sometimes in the North American context. Um, I really believe that fan ownership, whether it be emotional or, or um, you know, actually financial, is an important aspect to try and educate um, you know local people about and, and say, hey man, it's not much, um, but when you show up once, you're now uh, you're now a partner for life. For people to understand, um, they are gonna own the successes of some of those players, whether it be off the field or you know hopefully on the field, moving towards a national team program or something like that. Yeah. You, you were a part of growing that. Yeah. Yeah. But I learned about soccer culture in England when I you know when I landed on those shores, I saw four levels of competition you know and again England England for instance it's you know it's 96 professional teams in this in the landscape of about you know one US state so you know you got 96 pro teams and they're all jockeying per position there's third division teams there's Premier League teams and, um, you know usually most fans in England have a Premier League team so in, in this culture it would be like I got my MLS team and then I got my local teams. And then you support from all of them, and all of those drive you to the stands for many different reasons. You know, everyone there is for there for a different reason. Sometimes it's, oh, you're a player. Sometimes it's, you're a super fan. Sometimes you're a coach. Sometimes you're an administrator. Sometimes you're a sponsor. Sometimes you're a kid fan that wants to learn about the sport. There's a, there's a million reasons why people come to the stadium, but creating culture, that role is about finding each of those individuals and try to promote why they want to be there. But you only you only get to those answers by asking. You only get to that answer by engaging. And when you start to find those answers of why people are coming for the stadium and many different reasons, then you can build the culture that's required to have them come every week for whatever reason. And that's that for me is the truest soccer culture. And you know, in a North American culture that's now based on selling season tickets, create the culture first, and the season tickets take care of themselves. So right. In, like we need a place for them to go. There's no place for them to go. Uh, the Canadian Premier League is going to be a fantastic opportunity for them but still we're gonna be as we sit right now we can't find any research to say that there is another team on the planet that is a hundred percent Canadian coaching staff uh, through to players anywhere on the planet 
and you know, from our perspective, we want access and participation from everybody at the at the grassroots to be able to participate in our own national championship. We're not allowed in. So, you know, we, we're going to win it though, we're going to win it, one day we're going to win it, and we're going to win it with a full uh, Canadian roster, um, and that's something we can lean in on. You know, we're, we're going to help change the system. I mean, I think I think this is this is hysterical, but inside the German, you know, world champion German pyramid is 31,000 clubs. We have currently four that are allowed to participate. So, so we've we got a long way to go, and guys like us just want to be a part of a solution.